This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Good evening, friends, and welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout. I'm your host, Larry Lawson, coming to you from the hurricane-damaged Southern Command Post of the X-Zone Broadcast Network here in Vero Beach in Felsmere, Florida. Um, it's been a long two weeks, and I'm really, really glad to be back, everybody. It's uh, We've had a difficult time down here in Florida between the uh, prep for the storm, the storm itself, and then the cleanup afterwards. But we didn't have it nearly as bad here on the Treasure Coast as our friends did over in the southwest part of the state and the Florida Keys. So I want to just take a second to uh, let all of you know, all of our listeners down there, that we're thinking of you. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Uh, and you will rebuild as you always do down there. And uh, I also want to thank all of my listeners who sent me uh, well wishes and prayers. I'm sorry I didn't see a lot of them until after my power came back on, but I just want to let you know how much I appreciate your thoughts and comments also. Our, uh, our guest tonight took it a little worse than we did. He's about 70 miles west of the Treasure Coast in Bartow, Florida. Rob Robinson, legend tripper. And we'll talk about what legend tripping is in just a few minutes. But a little bit about Rob. He uh, served our country in the United States Army for 21 years. And uh, in 2003, he retired and started teaching junior ROTC at Summerlin Academy in Bartow, Florida where he's at today. Uh, Rob has a bachelor's degree from Everest University and an associate's degree from Central Texas College. He became interested in cryptozoology after watching the movie Legend of Boggy Creek when he was just a child. His mother, from, who is from Scotland, also regaled him with stories about the Loch Ness Monster. He also had an uncle from the old country that would tell him stories of monsters and monster legends. And all of this uh, kind of scared Rob, but what he did was he turned that fear into a passion, and that passion became the study of legends and cryptozoology. After his retirement from the Army, he began uh, going on swamp ape or skunk ape expeditions here in Florida, as well as other monster hunts to include a reported lake serpent in frost-proof Florida. He has participated in numerous paranormal investigations as well, and he tries to go on at least one monster or ghost hunt a month as his schedule allows. Uh, because his interests encompass more than just cryptozoology and the paranormal, Rob refers himself to himself as a legend tripper. Rob completed the second installment of PBS's Weird Florida series titled Weird Florida on the Road in uh, January of 2013, and in 2014 filmed a segment of on the Florida skunk ape for the television show Monsters and Mysteries of America on Destination America Channel. Rob published his first book, Legend Tripping, The Ultimate Adventure in 2016, and this book can be found in Ripley's, believe it or not, uh, gift stores as well as other outlets around the country. Rob, welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout, man. Thanks, Larry. Thanks yeah, how, fun. Yeah, how are you doing over there? Is the cleanup uh, about done for you guys, or are you still working on uh, getting squared away after Irma came through? Uh, well, um, the funny thing is, is that in my house, or I should say my property, I don't have any trees, but the neighbor's tree fell down, and now I have a big, huge tree in my yard now. So uh, we had to uh, get out there, and we had to kind of, with chainsaws, and because it was uh, partly on the road, mm -hmm. we got it moved aside, but it's still out there. We're waiting for the, uh, I don't know if it's the uh, the town or the county that will are going to come out there with their uh, big claws and, and grab it up. But, uh, um, you know, we, we were lucky, I'll be honest with you. I, I have a really, really good, well-built home, and I didn't really sustain uh, damage well, other than our Florida room. And well, uh, well, glad to hear that, my friend. I'm glad to hear that. And your health is better. You, had, you actually had an accident out on one of your expeditions uh, a year or so ago. How are you feeling from that? 
Oh, actually, I'm feeling a lot good, better now. I mean, it's, I, I still, uh, what is it? I, I feel it when it all, you know, I feel it on the rain, as uh, John Wayne would say, when it, the weather's real crappy outside. I can feel the aches and pains. But um, I'm up, I'm out there walking around. I have to watch how much weight I walk around. I haven't actually started running yet, uh, but I have uh, been going out there walking. And thank God I have these really comfortable uh, hiking uh, <laughs> shoes on from Merrill. You know, you know the Merrill company, but yeah. uh, I, well, I'm, at least getting, you, I'm getting at there. At least I'm you getting... did in the at least you did in the line of duty, so to speak, out there on an exhibition <laughs> expedition looking for uh, for uh, the skunk ape. Um, yes, skunk yeah, ape. Call... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say when I called my publisher and told him about it and stuff, and you know, I said, yeah, I was out looking for my uh, you know researching the book, and he goes. He goes, well, I hope you're not going to try to put in for workers' comp. You know, you're just, uh, you know. Well, uh, briefly, uh, we're getting ready to go on our first break here in just a minute or so. But briefly, uh, remind my audience, what's a legend tripper? Legend tripper is an individual that goes out and uh, does an investigation on a legend. That legend can be anything in the cryptozoology field, Bigfoot, uh, Lake Monsters, um, the Jersey Devil, the Mothman. Uh, and then you can also do in the paranormal, which be, you know, haunted houses or, you know, not necessarily say haunted houses, haunted places, uh, uh -huh. mysterious places, you know, like you got Clinton Road up in New Jersey. You uh -huh. got Coral Castle down in uh, Homestead, if it's still there. Uh, and you got um, UFO legends. Or I, I like to go look for, you know, supposed crash sites. Oh, OK. Well, well we're, I'm, I got to cut you short here because. Boy, we're already almost up on our first break, but I want to talk more about legend tripping and particularly skunk ape, swamp ape, and is that a Bigfoot? And we'll talk about that more in just a second, folks. So stay with us and uh, we'll see you in just a couple minutes. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout with my guest tonight, legend tripper Rob Robinson. Uh, Rob, we just started getting into what legend tripping was a, a moment ago, um, and it, it encompasses everything in the paranormal, it sounds like. Uh, now, are these guided trips, or is this just a, uh, a term that somebody uses to describe their interests? What's the difference there? Uh, well, um, a legend trip doesn't necessarily have to be a guided trip. I mean... If you've never done it, it's always good to get with people that have done it before, you know, uh, Bigfoot hunting, uh, skunk ape hunting, or a ghost hunting, you know, go with people that have actually done it if you've never done it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, once you get out there and you start doing it, you know, you don't necessarily have to, I mean, I like to go out in groups. I think the more people out there, the, you know, the more people uh, were actually got, you know, as an expression, feet on the ground out there looking, mm -hmm. it can be anything from, you know, Bigfoot hunting to uh, doing a paranormal investigation in, say, in an, uh, an old jail where you have to break people uh, groups out into different locations. Mm -hmm. um, buried treasure one is more or less 
you know, that's kind of a, I mean, I haven't really done that with any groups. I've done that more or less with my wife and, and that's, uh, you know, we've kind of, unfortunately, it's kind of been a bust as, as, as far as the ones that we went looking for. Well, over here on the Treasure Coast, uh, they've, they've, a lot of, has washed up treasure-wise. But, so what you're telling me is a legend tripper is, is just somebody that has uh, a multiple interests in the paranormal of the unknown. Would that be an accurate statement? Yeah, that's very accurate. Okay. But your particular interest is uh, the skunk ape or the swamp ape. Am I correct in that also? Well, out of all the legend trips, that's the one I really enjoy the most because I also enjoy camping and, and being outside. Well, skunk ape, swamp ape, Bigfoot, what's the difference between the three? Well, um, quick answer is location. Uh, Bigfoot is located on the West Coast. Uh, the uh, skunk ape, or it's called the swamp ape by some people, uh, is located here in Florida. Actually, uh, to be honest with you, uh, over in Arkansas, Louisiana, they've also referred to it as a skunk ape as well. Okay. Uh, are they the same uh, theoretically, or are they supposed to be the same animal? Um, quick answer, and again, I'm going to say this real quick. This is my opinion, all okay. right? Okay. Uh, yes, I believe we're dealing with the same animal. I've done research. In fact, I'm researching in my uh, book for, on the Florida skunk ape. And at first I thought maybe the animal, when I was initially doing it, and then I was talking to some other people, they were stating that the, uh, the animal down here in Florida is, is smaller. It's not quite as tall. But when I was doing my research and looking at all newspaper reports, the animal is just as tall you know, eight foot to ten foot here in Florida as it is in on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, again, you know, the animal pretty much the same description. It is uh, supposedly a little bit lighter uh, here, and I would say that's because the the, the climate here in Florida might make its uh, um, hair on it maybe lighter or you know, moss a little leaner or, maybe. Yeah, but as far as the, uh, the the basic way it moves and the the size and uh, and the smell it gives off, uh, I think we're dealing with the same animal. So basically people just call it different things in different parts of the country. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. I got to ask you a question. I'm going to just be flat out blunt with you. Yes, sir. Does Bigfoot exist, really? I believe there is, uh, okay, quick answer, yes. I believe there is a large bipedal unknown creature who is made? Who is uh, dwelling in various parts of the, uh, uh, you know, the continental United States and other parts of the world? Mm -hmm. uh, what, like the Yeti and uh, I guess in the, in yes. Asia, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, uh, you got the Yaren. You got the Yowie down in uh, Australia. You got the Almista in uh, in Russia, and uh, you know, there's other other uh, you know animals out there that it's basically the same uh, description, just different names. Okay. All these different animals out there, and, and I'm a ghost guy, so I, I know what it's like for people to say, you know, I don't believe it. But frankly, Rob, there's more pictures of ghosts than there are of Bigfoot. Why, why have, not, have we not seen more evidence of the existence well, of these creatures? I mean, especially in today's technology. Well, um, okay, well, the comparison to the paranormal... Again, and I'm going to state this, and I'll, I'll probably say this a hundred more times in the interview. This is my opinion. Okay. My wife's, uh, my wife's a ghost hunter. Okay. When it comes to paranormal, you pretty much, the uh, paranormal activity is located usually in a facility, whereas the, uh, uh, I call it the animal. I refer to uh, Bigfoot as an animal. Uh, it's located in a large wooded area, swamped area. And this animal does shy away from people from the, for the most part. It does, it has been known to make contact. You know, it's been going, seen going through dumpsters. It's been seen looking through windows. It's been, you know, seen walking across the street. But for the most part, it does avoid humans. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, you know, there is evidence out there. There's footprints have been seen. There are some videos out there. There's, right. uh, you know, you got the uh, Roger Patterson, uh, Bob Gimlin. Film in 1968, Bluff Creek, which you know even scientists to this day haven't been able to totally debunk. You got Stacy Brown Jr.'s uh, 
thermal video that he took a couple of years ago up uh, in the uh, Torreya State Park. Very good right. piece of evidence. Uh, and, um, you know, there's been other, uh, you know. Why not uh, a body? Why not a body? Body well, somewhere. I, it's like uh, when you go in the woods, you're not going to find the body of a panther or, or a bear, but they're out there. You okay, know? Well, well, okay. Well, I, I, being a hiker myself, I, you know, I've found evidence of other animals, and I think it's a legitimate question uh, yeah. as well, to why. I mean, with drones, I mean, we've got satellites even. Yeah. Well, uh, let me they, answer, they, let, let me answer, let answer that question again in another way about why, about the body question. Uh, one time, me, me and my wife, we went out to the Green Swamp, and when you go through, you got to check in where, with where, the gate warden. Where's the Green Swamp at? That is located north of Lakeland. Uh, East of Orlando, it is a it's a thousand uh, acre preserve out there, but parts of it are open for uh, for hunting, and it's part of the Florida watershed. Anyway, um, there have been numerous sightings out there of uh, the of the of this animal out there. Anyway, I went out to go put a trail cam, and we came through the uh, the little area, and I talked to the game warden, and we went through. And we you know got this real nauseating smell, and we looked over. And we saw all these pig carcasses. I mean, I don't know how many of them were. There were over more than 20 just sitting over there. And we drove on. I put my camera in place, and then we went. And I came back a couple of days later to get it. Mm -hmm. And we came around, and all the carcasses were gone. I mean, there was nothing there. Um, and I went over to the game warden, and I said, man, you guys must have had a heck of a time getting all those dead carcasses, uh, those uh, uh, wild boar picked up he goes we didn't do it i said well what happened he goes nature has its own garbage disposal and i sure. said well, so i mean any animal that you know that goes out you know dies out in the wilderness there's plenty of things that will clean it up so to speak i i guess uh, um once again playing devil's advocate and there's been some questions some of the films you've talked about before as to their validity and, yes. and like I said, I get the get the same thing on the ghost side, so I, I understand how that goes. But the the one picture and, and the the name of the film escapes me. It looks like a man in in an ape suit, actually, based upon how he was walking. Uh, okay. It just go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, I want to chime in on it because I, I did go out there and okay. I did. Stacy took me out to the location where it was filmed. Okay. And I had my wife, and I went ahead and I went and reenacted it, you know, with a normal, you know. We didn't do a thermal, we just used a regular camera. And I did that in order to kind of get an idea of the height of, uh, because, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I, I always go into this, I'm not gonna say skeptical. You know, I always say, you know, I keep an open mind, but I don't keep it so open that my brains fall out, you know? But, <laughs> okay. but I, I mean, a former military policeman, you know, an army cop, I always, you know, I, I believe in things, but I don't necessarily believe everything everybody tells me. So I treat it like you know a serious investigation. I listen to everything, and I listen to his story. And then he took me out to the location, and sure enough, it, you know it matches up with his video. And I went ahead and had my wife film me doing the walk between the trees over there, which one of the trees isn't even up anymore. And, but, and which uh, film is this, Rob? Not to interrupt you, but which film is this again? You're talking, talking Stacy Brown's uh, thermal video. Okay, and that was and that was taken where? That was taken to Rayo State Park up near, uh, um, uh, I guess it's close to Tallahassee. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh, no, not at all. Um, but anyway, I went ahead and did the walk, and, and then we looked at the film and compare myself standing next to the trees to the animal. That animal was well over eight feet tall. Mm -hmm. So it was incredibly, I mean, it took a couple steps where it took me um you know, I had to hop to make those steps. And I'll be honest with you, it was kind of rough because it's on the side of a hill. So it mm -hmm. wasn't all that easy to do it. And I kept thinking for somebody to do this in the dark as well, to move around in that area. Now, other than the thermal photographs or thermal video they got, any other evidence taken from that particular case? Um, I don't think for that one there, but we, you know, we were up there, um, I think last, uh, let's say, about a year ago uh, in November, we were up on the, um, in the bridges. There's a family that lives over there close to it, and we found footprints. 
and we end up taking Stacy uh, took some uh, castings and really came out really well. Okay. And you can see that these are some really large, you know, they are not, they do not look like bear prints. And I, I've seen bear prints out there. Okay. So I'm well aware of what the bear look like out there. And here in Florida, the bear are not as big as they are located up uh, on the, uh, on the uh, you know, in California and those, uh, Oregon and those areas over there. Yeah, we've only got the smaller black bears here. Yeah, yeah they're not much bigger than a large German shepherd. Right, right. <sighs> What's the best piece of evidence you have personally found that convinced you of the existence of skunk ape, Bigfoot? What's the best piece of evidence Rob Robinson has come across? Well, I was with Stacy Brown and them. I can't say it's my evidence because we were all out there together. Mm -hmm. Is when we found those footprints last November. Okay. Because, I mean, I kept, you know, these were in an area where, you know, the, there was nobody out there. It's on private property. And these are, you know, I mean, if you were going to put fake prints out there, this would not have been a place for somebody to put them. You know, you want to, you would put them up on a dirt road or somewhere, you know, somebody would find them. You know, well, these are kind okay. of back in the wood line. And it was just, in fact, the way the, 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 the way the whole incident happened was the night prior, I had gone with two other guys to go investigate these caves that we found, which were actually just areas, uh, they weren't really caves, they were limestone where the water had actually uh, come through and just kind of made it, you know. But anyway, we were out there uh, with two other gentlemen and we had two guys that went over to the Bridges house. Anyway, when they got out there, one of them, the guy Dean, has a, uh, a Land Rover. Uh -huh. Well, they got out and the other gentleman's name was Josh. Well, anyway, they go down to, uh, uh, the Bridges have a small little shack, they call it the Sugar Shack. Yeah. And, and you know what? I hate to do this to you, Rob, but we're just about ready to come up on a break here in about 30 Got seconds. It. So go ahead and put that on hold. I want you to get back with that because I want to hear more about your evidence of Bigfoot. Folks, stay with us. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hey folks, welcome back to Paranormal Stakeout. My guest tonight, Rob Robinson, legend tripper, cryptozoologist. Rob, we were talking a little bit about um, the best piece of evidence you saw or you, you obtained. You were with some folks up in Tallahassee. Uh, I'll go ahead and let you finish that story right now and uh, have some more questions for you, but go ahead. Okay, uh, like again, uh, the, the gentleman that we're doing the, uh, over there by the, in the Bridges property was a, their name was Josh and Dean. And they went out there with Dean's Land Rover. They parked it up near the uh, the main uh, entrance to their property, and they walked down to the sugar shack. Well, all of a sudden, uh, Dean's uh, car alarm goes off, and they can look up and they can see it, the thing moving. I mean, there was enough light out there they could see it moving. So when they go up there, well, Dean, first of all, he he uh, he hits the uh, you know the button, turns it off, and then reactivates it again just to see if you know. It was just a, a fluke. Well, next thing you know, it goes off again, and they can kind of, you know, and so they will start walking up toward the uh, the car, and all of a sudden, something screams at them on their left-hand side on the property next to the bridges. There's a, there was a fence there about maybe 20 feet from the, uh, the dirt road they were on. Anyway, they both 
you know, froze. And then when Josh brought his uh, flashlight up, they caught the sh shape of a large, uh, something large as it turned and it ran back and ran into the woods. Mm -hmm. Well, these two guys, Dean and Josh, are big, huge guys, and they do not get scared very easily. Anyway, they get back in the car. They head on back over to our campsite. Um, I show up later on. You know, uh, you know, we didn't find nothing where we were at. We get out there. And Stacy said, hey, man, you need to come listen to what happened to Josh and Dean. And I, they tell their story. And uh, um, I'm watching them. And Dean is just kind of sitting in his uh, little uh, outdoor chair. And he's just staring off into you know space. Whereas Dean is just, I mean, uh, Josh is just sitting there shaking. And again, these are two really big muscular guys that really, I've never seen either one of them ever scared of anything when we've been out there. And, uh, you know, Dean ended up leaving. Dean said, I'm going home. I'm, that, that was too much for me. And Josh yeah. said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go out, but I ain't going out there by myself no more. So next day they went out there and we found prints not too far from where they heard the scream. And they took castings and uh, they are some really, I mean, you can clearly see the, uh, the toes as well as, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the heel and all that stuff. Really good prints. And we looked around, we ended up finding more. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that just, you know, and then, I mean, they're really, really large, large prints. And, uh, I can't remember and, the measurements on them. Yeah. And there's been, there's been, I mean, we've all seen, all of us that have looked into this have seen the pictures and the videos of some of these prints. There's no question that there's, that they're unusual and strange. And I want to talk a little bit about the TV end of this in just a second. But, we were when we were talking about the Patterson Gimlin film a little while ago. Yes. Uh, how familiar are you with that particular piece of filmography, shall we say? Uh, I, I, you know, I've read about it numerous times. I've I've never met Bob Gimlin. Unfortunately, I was hoping to, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, I've heard you know various scientists say that you know it can't be a guy in a suit. I understand there's you know there's a gentleman out there. Um, who says he was in the suit? Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, it was Bob Gimlin. But go ahead. Um, and then, of course, you've got um, uh, Philip Morris, uh, who claims he actually built the suit that was used in the in the, in the film. And I, him, I got to meet. He owns a uh, costume uh, place in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh huh. When I was still in the army, we were setting up a haunted house, and we had to go up there to get some props and stuff. And uh, in fact, his son came down and actually helped us set up our haunted house. But I do remember walking around his warehouse and stuff, and I do remember seeing, you know, gorilla costumes. But I didn't see anything. In fact, all the gorilla costumes look really cheesy. <laughs> well, did, did he say? Did he, uh, did he acknowledge the film or his part in it at all? You know, at that time, I, the, he, there was no tie-in with him with uh, doing the film. I mean, doing the uh, the the Patterson video. Okay. I went up there, I went there strictly to get stuff for us to make the haunted house. Uh -huh. And then later on, I said, you know, when it came up, I kept saying, I remember that guy. I went, I was in his uh, warehouse, but I remember looking around at you know the costumes that he had in there, and I didn't think anything particular, especially the gorilla costumes, that mm -hmm. I thought, wow, those things look real, you know. Yeah, and. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy in that film, and I and I yeah. know you, you Rob, and I know know your work. But does this kind of controversy? Because I'll be honest with you, when I when I see the film, and this is just my opinion, I see a guy walking in in, in a in a suit. That's the well, just it's just my opinion. Well, but, a lot of people said that, you know, and it was you know brought to my attention, you know, that you know um, Roger had a bit of a, a shady past. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. There's no denying that. Um, I mean, he was, you know, when they went out, they were going out to make a film. And, you know, there is a, a story where he did purchase a, a gorilla costume. He was going to reenact some of the stuff. And, uh, you know, he did have some, you know, people, uh, the cowboys he was going to take out there and film. But mm -hmm. that particular time, you know, the way the story goes is he went out there with Gimlin and just those guys just to do some filming. Well, so, and, and we'll never really find out the true story there um but my question to you is you know you've done so you've you've done work in this field you've done research in this field how has 
that type of controversy hurt what you've done or has it helped? Well, the fact that the, the film still is, you know, there's still, I mean, there's people that say it's a, you know, it's fake or a hoax. There's people out there say it's the best evidence out there. I mean, it's still getting passed around today, you know, um, nobody, you know, there's scientists that, you know, have gone on uh, record saying that, uh, you know, it, it's not a guy in a suit. And there's scientists that say, oh, yeah, absolutely. You can <laughs> you can look closely and see that it is a guy in a suit. So but it, the controversy is still there and the film is still out there. People still look at it and question it. So, I mean, so I, so I got to so ask it. It helps. It helps. Okay, all right. It, it, it keeps the interest alive. I want yes, to change. Does. I want to ch change gears a little bit here. Um, TV shows. Yes, sir. Uh, there, there's been some good ones out there. There's been some really strange ones out there. There's one in particular <laughs> that's. Uh, I won't mention it by name, but uh, while it's entertaining, and a lot of people need to realize that's what this stuff is for is entertainment. Um, it sheds a, I think it sheds a kind of a negative light on those like yourself that are doing serious research. How well, has TV, how has TV helped or hurt? What you've well, done? first of all, those shows like that, and uh, you know, there's other shows out there about Bigfoot. You know, there was one that you know, Finding Bigfoot. They aren't really made for people that are investigators and stuff. They're made strictly for people that you know sit at home and watch TV. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's mostly the people that watch those things. Um, I mean, I've watched various episodes of some of these shows. Um, but, I mean, like I said, and, 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 you know, they're made usually usually by a British uh, um, film company. Mm -hmm. And and I've worked with uh, them a couple times. And they really aren't care. They don't really care if they find it or not. You know, they just get out there and film and then they'll put their little spin on it or special effects or whatever to make it look like something was out there. Uh, and, I, and I think you see that on most of the paranormal related TV shows. It's entertainment. Yeah, yes. Unfortunately, some of the popular ones, they've had that happen again. It's just, you know, you know, how would I say it? Nobody wants to watch a show, a ghost show where they're not finding ghosts. They want to find, a sh they want to watch a show where they, they're, they're getting positive results. So, mm -hmm. If they don't get it, they're going to make them get it. If it takes, you know, some special effects or some sound effects to make it happen. Because mm -hmm. that's what people want to see. You know, you got that show that we just were talking about where these guys are out there doing it. You know, if they go out there and not find anything, nobody wants to watch that. They want to see it where they do find this stuff. Okay, okay then let's let's uh, take this next tech. I, I, there's one show, once again, I won't mention it by name, but it talks about actually finding one of the these creatures and killing it oh what? that one show, i don't even know if that shows even i know what you're talking about yeah there i well, mean there, there are people that really believe the only uh, way we're going to prove it is to is to bring in a body and i've met i've met numerous uh bigfoot hunters that f really believe that i mean my, my own personal uh, theory is i mean my own personal belief I understand science needs a, a body, but it's not going to be me that brings one in. But back to that show, again, you know, it's it, these shows are purely for entertainment. Um, anybody who's, like, seriously into Bigfoot hunting doesn't really pay these shows any mind. And I, I believe that's the same way, the way it is with some of the paranormal shows. A lot of paranormal investigators really don't even watch those shows. But don't you find also, Rob, that some folks in our respective fields just feel that need to go out and um, grab that golden ring, become famous for their 15 minutes or whatever, and therefore take some of their legitimately gained knowledge and maybe try to parlay that into an opportunity that ends up hurting our field? Do you think you got an opinion on that? Um well, yeah, I guess the bottom line, there are people out there that will, you know, as I called you, uh, I, I refer to it as selling your soul to the devil. Okay. Um, yeah. so, I mean, if you're going to break from, you know, uh, break from the, the hard, how am I going to say this? If you're going to break from the faith and be a legit investigator and go ahead and whatever that film crew wants, 
just so you can be famous, then, you know, like I said, that's, yeah, that's selling your soul to the devil. You and, know, and, the, uh, and there's folks like that out there. But on the same token, I want to make sure it's clear. There's a lot of folks in our field, too, that look at that as an opportunity to uh, provide people with actual evidence. And they do. There are folks out there that I believe do it with the uh, right intent. Oh, I, but, I really believe all everybody goes out there with the right intent. I mean, some of these shows, like I said, they were at the beginning. And then, of course, when the ratings get good, they, you know, they, they got to, you know, produce, you know, otherwise people are going to yeah. lose their, their viewers. Um, you know, I, I think there's still some people out there that are, de you know, diehard, dedicated investigators. The, the, the four uh, people from the show Finding Bigfoot, they're still out there looking. I've been out there with those guys, Bobo and Cliff Barakman. I've been out with those guys. They good are folks. Still, hmm? They're good, good folks. Oh, great the, people, and they still maintain the faith. You know, I okay. mean, they still, they haven't sold their souls to the devil yet. Um, whereas that other show, you're talking to me, definitely. You know, they'll they'll do whatever these producers want them to. You know. Well, I, I think you just watch a couple of them, and you realize it's strictly for entertainment. Yes. Um, where are you at with your research right now? We've just got I've got about a minute or so before our next break, but where are you at right now with your research into the field? Uh, right now, I'm trying to go look uh, into some old uh, um, re uh, research that was done by a lady by the name of uh, Ramona Clark Hibner. Mm -hmm. And she was a serious investigator down, uh, she was based out of Brooksville, Florida. And she really did some awesome uh, research down here in Florida. And I'm trying to find that research because unfortunately, she's not with us. She died in 1986. Okay. So that's where I'm at right now, trying to get find all this information, and also, uh, you know, trying to research where the term skunk ape actually got used. Uh, I'd like I, to know that I myself. Think, yeah, I well, I I, I I think I found it. I think. Well, uh, oh, we I may ask you about that. We're gonna take our last break here, um, so stay with us, folks. Rob Robinson, Legend Tripper, more to more to talk about. We'll see you on the other side here in just a minute. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7, 365. Welcome back, folks, to our final segment tonight uh, of Paranormal Stakeout. I want to take a moment to encourage all of you, all of my listeners out there, to listen to all the other terrific programming found on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. Go to www.xzbn.net to catch all of the programming and schedules. I uh, also want to take a moment to ask you to visit uh, my website, www.paranormalstakeout.com www.paranormalfbi.com my paranormal group down here in Florida and uh, Rob Robinson I want you to take a look at his book it's called Legend Tripping the Ultimate Adventure and it talks about a whole whole host of different uh, 
ideas and thoughts and places to go for different types of paranormal investigations or adventures. Uh, you can visit uh, Rob on his website, legendtrippersofamerica.blogspot.com uh, slash forward slash. Uh, Rob, as we uh, kind of wind down a little bit here, one thing that we didn't talk about at all is uh, your um, appearance at the fourth annual Perry Unity Conference here in Felsmere, Florida, the first week in November. We're looking yeah. forward, to, looking forward to having you down here. What? No, I'm looking forward to it myself. Terrific. What are you What are you going to bring the audience? What are you What are you going to come um, and chat well, with us? Last about? time I, I I spoke, I spoke about you know legend tripping. I I think I want to uh, do a presentation on the Florida Skunk Cape and talk about some of the, you know, the recent research that's uh, that's come to light, because I, like I said, I'm uh, that's what I'm doing my next book on, and okay. I found out really interesting facts, and I'm still researching. Uh, like I said, I'm still looking into uh, Ramona Clark Hibner's uh, stuff. I'm still out there trying to find out where all her research went to. Okay, uh, now she passed away. You said. 1986, yes. How long had she researched uh, the, the skunk ape in Florida? Um, I actually haven't found the date that she started, but I, I know she was doing it in the, uh, in the 60s and 70s. The stories of the Florida skunk ape, as you're, as you're doing your research, it was, was it an, an Indian legend? Was it uh, a Native American legend, I should say? Was it um, pioneers in Florida? Where, where does the legend come from? Well, I mean, quick answer. Yeah, the Native Americans do have stories about it. Uh, the they, in fact, they, um, you know, talking some of the Seminoles, they really don't like us going out looking for it. They think we should leave it alone. Uh, the pioneers do have stories about it. There is a story up near the um, in the eighteen early eighteen hundreds near the Georgia Florida border where they're uh, actually uh, where one was uh, killed. But, uh, you know, it killed five uh, settlers before it was actually killed. Mm -hmm. um, where did that documentation come from? That's an interesting story. Uh, I found that and just going through some of the, uh, you know, stories about uh, I got that from uh, I think Lauren Coleman got uh, showed me that one. OK, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's not hard to find. It's actually been passed around. It's been it's it's been in print a couple uh, other times. So I'm, I won't. I, I hate to say I'm not going to be the first one who's uh, who's had it in his book. I think John Green, who's wrote a lot of uh, stories about Bigfoot, I think he has it in one of his books as well. If you had to guess, based upon based upon your research, based upon some of your field investigations, and I still want to get out there with you on one. I'm looking forward to that. We got to we got to chat about that. Yeah. What's the population? I mean, how many do you think could be creeping around the? bogs and bayous of the state of Florida? Well, my own personal guess is we're looking at about 100. That many. And I won't lie, I kind of got that from uh, Dr. Jeff Muldrum. Me and him were sitting around talking. Where does he, he where, said that, hmm? uh, Go ahead, go ahead. I, when I was up at the Ohio uh, Bigfoot Conference speaking, I got, me and him actually uh, met with co for coffee and we kind of talked about some of the stuff going on in Florida. And that actually came up, and he said, in order for the animals, you know, the animal to kind of keep moving, it would roughly, and, and in fact, the, where they're seen all over Florida, you know, we both agreed, are, are off, off and around about a hundred. Off and about a hundred. That's a that's a lot for for not having as many sightings. But you say it's been seen all over Florida. That's um, correct. When's the last time we had a sighting in Florida of the skunk ape? Well, the last sighting just happened right after the hurricane um, up near uh, Crystal River uh, okay. uh, last week. Some lady said she saw it across the road. How did that report come out? Uh, it was on the BRFO website. Uh, Matt Moneymaker, the gentleman from uh, Finding Bigfoot, he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's a director of uh, the uh, Bigfoot Field Research Organization, and they have, they have an awesome database on uh, Bigfoot sightings. And it was uh, uh, they the lady uh, called him up and reported it to him, and of course they put it out on uh, on the internet about the sighting. Okay, that that brings up a, an interesting question. And uh, MUFON, or, or to, to use that that organization that studies UFOs, uh, I know at some point uh, they had field investigators. A report would come in, and they would send out field investigators. Does the BFRO do the same thing? Yes, they do. 
They do. Uh, they have a uh, they have a uh, a chapter in uh, every every state. I know the the lady down here who's uh, in fact her name escapes me. Isn't that something? But uh, um, it's age, Rob. It's age. Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> Cause she just sent me an email uh, last week about she's uh, doing a uh, a town hall meeting up near Tampa and asked me if I wanted to come out there. But um, th but anyway, back to the original question. They have a uh, every BRFO has a a um, a team, as you will, in every state in the United States, with the exception of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. In fact, they actually have teams in Canada as well. They've actually branched out past the, uh, you know, the borders of the United States. Well, with a hundred, and I, and I realize it's just a, a guesstimate, but with a hundred of these creatures supposedly in Florida, how often are uh, Crystal Rivers, a, it's, it's a fairly rural area. Yes, it is. Any particular areas, uh, times where a, a Bigfoot's been sighted in a more rural area? I'm sorry, more a more urban type area, I apologize. And I don't mean like I don't mean like a Miami, but uh, you know our neck of the woods, maybe a a, a Fellowsmere or a Vero Beach, something like that. Has that ever happened? Well, yeah, there's actually been signs up near uh, on um, uh, was it Merritt Island? Okay, and Merritt Island for my listeners, that's just it's basically where Cape Canaveral is on the east coast. Okay, that's correct. That's correct. On the island itself? Yes. No, I, I I have to go look and find out how long ago there was a sighting out there, but there was. Right. Okay, um, and and that, I guess that still begs me why why not more evidence? But you could say the same thing about myself and uh, my paranormal investigation. So I, I do get that. Um, the latest sighting up in Crystal River. Yes, sir. What going back to that? What did the person describe as what they saw? Just a creature standing there, crossing the road. What what happened it, there? It, it crossed the road. It was a large, hairy, uh, you know. Uh, bipedal creature mm -hmm. and uh, it was right after the storm and uh, she was driving I forget why she was driving I I, I just uh, I, I saw the report I just kind of looked at it real quick okay and then and to be honest with you I was trying to find out just where it was that she saw it because I wanted to get you know get up in that location and go you know scout around mm -hmm. it, it crossed over the road okay and, uh, it, it, she said it took like two steps and it was it was over the road Interesting. Um, I'd like to I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about uh, BFRO in in Florida, and I'd like to maybe get one of those folks on the show because I'm really really interested in uh, what maybe some of their investigative techniques and protocols are in to to verify some of this stuff. So uh, maybe I can get you to help me do that, my friend. Yeah, I can get a hold of her, and I'll I'll, I'll pass her here, uh, give you her email, and uh, and I, you know I I've, I've talked to her in the past. She's a real nice lady, and you know I'm sure she'll. Love to come on the uh, and talk about it. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, I, I'll tell you, Rob, I'm looking forward to having you join us with all the other terrific guests for our event in November. Um, once again, it's the fourth annual Para Unity event in Felsmere, Florida. It's going to be held in the old school, which is currently the Felsmere City Hall. Uh, it's going to be a great time, and uh, I know the folks that are going to be there are going to uh, enjoy hearing what you have to say uh, about Bigfoot. Um, Anything else that uh, that you might want to bring up or tell the listeners that you're going to chat about at the uh, conference? Uh, well, I'll, you know, I am going to be bringing some of my books up there to sell. Um, okay. I had actually ordered a bunch of books because you know, for the I had uh, two uh, festival or conferences to go to, but unfortunately, with Hurricane Irma, I, it, you know that that. But the, messed up all but that, of us. I wasn't able to go, you know. Yeah, that messed up all of us in a lot of different areas. Are you going to be bringing any evidence with you? Uh, I will be bringing some, yeah, I'll be bringing some uh, tracks with me. A gentleman sent me a, a copy of his track that he he took up near uh, Brooksville back in the mm -hmm. 70s, uh, near the Withlacoochee River, and I'm going to bring that up there, which is a really, really good fact. I, I showed it at the Ohio one, and, people, <laughs> you know, everybody wanted a copy of it, so... Okay, and uh, and uh, do you have any voice uh, or sounds? I, I know they make. Uh, I've heard different noises that the the Bigfoot allegedly makes. You bring any recordings of that at all? I do have recordings of them. Yes, I have the Sierra sounds, which are considered, uh, you know, some of the best um, recordings of an unknown type animal out there. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
Uh, I was going to say, I definitely bring in the footprints, uh, or I should say the castings, as we call them. Yeah. Uh, I'll bring a copy of a Gigantopithecus uh, a jawline, which some people or uh, think that the animal may be related to the Gigantopithecus. It's still, you know, it's still out there. Okay. Well, we're going to look forward to that, my friend, as we begin to wrap up our show tonight. Uh, Rob, thanks for being with us. We're going to look forward to seeing you in November. People are going to get a chance to see this evidence and make uh, the decision themselves. And uh, folks, we'll see you next week for the next installment of Paranormal Stakeout. Appreciate you listening. We'll see you on the other side.